es fácil estar sin él Seis meses pasan muy lento Los otros seis viene aquí Y no nos rinde el dinero Antes podía soportar Pobreza con la tristeza Cuando él no estaba acá No aguantaba mi cabeza Hey there everyone Let's spend a few moments today focusing on our presentation of the very first mariachi-style opera, Cruzar la Cara de la Luna. What I'd like to do is attempt to define mariachi for you and give you a brief introduction to some of this style's characteristics. But first, a little history. It's been said that the term mariachi derived from the French word marriage, mariage, from the period that France was dominant in Mexico during the 1860s. But that theory, as popular as it is, seems to be wrong because now we have evidence that the word was in use before the French intervention. No one theory seems to be winning out. But what we do know is that when the Spaniards came to Mexico, they of course brought their musical instruments. These instruments were replicated by the indigenous Indians, built and formed to their own qualifications, then used in the performance of their own folk music. These folk bands were originally made up only of stringed instruments. In the colonial period, that meant a couple of violins, the folk harp, and some guitars. As you would imagine, a whole repertoire of music was created for these bands over a couple of centuries of development, music with its own rhythms, melodic contours, and forms. European influence was never far away, as paso dobles, waltzes, ballads, and polkas began to become part of that repertoire. Now that's the deep background. But what we have come to describe as mariachi today was really formed by the group Mariachi Vargas de Tecolitlan out of Jalisco, founded in the 1890s. They were responsible for the codification, if you will, of the traditional mariachi sound, as well as the makeup of the mariachi band. You will now rarely find a mariachi band without these elements. The guitarron, a bass guitar, the vihuela, a treble or high-pitched guitar that provides rhythm, two trumpets, that wonderful Mexican folk harp, and usually eight violins. Vocals would usually be shared by members of the group, depending on the demands of the song that they're presenting, although featured vocal soloists have long been part of that tradition. That vocal tradition, by the way, was definitely influenced by European opera, since normally in the outdoor settings where they played, they would sing without amplification, even today. The golden age of mariachi began in the 1930s when Mariachi Vargas was invited to perform at the inauguration of Lázaro Cárdenas, the president of Mexico. And their being featured in the Comedias Rancheras, popular commercial film comedies that were responsible for the explosion of the Mexican film industry. I think it's wonderful that the opera Cruzar was not only composed by Jose Pepe Martinez of the current generation of Mariachi Vargas, but that they will actually be performing the opera here in San Diego. In terms of the wonderful style of mariachi, that's rather like having the Dresden State Opera Company come to San Diego and perform Strauss's Salome, the opera that they premiered in 1905. And make no mistake about it, if the only mariachi you've heard is at a local restaurant of a large chain of faux Mexican restaurants, then you haven't experienced true mariachi. It's macho, infectious, exciting, sexy, and absolutely crucial, perfect for the story of Cruzar la Cara de la Luna. A little bit more about that story and more about mariachi in the future. I'm Nick Ravellis and I'll see you at the opera. Siguiendo algo, elevan el vuelo, ¿cuál es su destino? <tose> 